In this presentation, we're going to look at the, the next stage of the painting known as grisaille. Okay, so we've worked uh, with this subject matter last week. We did our imprimatura, which was the um, burnt sienna underpainting. And now hopefully it's dry. Uh, even if it's not, don't worry about it. The grays will just mix with the, the reddish browns and you'll just have a sort of a, a warm gray, as we say. So don't worry about it. So what I want you to do now is start to, to take your... Uh, still life in premature from last week and you're going to be putting your black white and gray right on top of it and refining it just a little bit more so if we go back um, here's the imprimatura study notice that it's it's loose but at least we're getting the proportions correct and the spacing and we're getting sort of the basic uh, divisions happening what you're going to do is you're going to start to lay in some of your grays now if you've listened to the PowerPoint uh, you would have seen that you cannot really gauge exactly how light or how dark something is supposed to be initially. You have to start getting some grays happening on your uh, canvas so that you can make those decisions. So, you know, is this the right gray? Is this the right dark? Uh, I don't really know yet. I've got to get more things next to each other because, like we saw in the presentation, our grays are relative. So, um, don't go into details, you know, skip all these details and all these lines and marks, you know, the major uh, piece of information about this bottle besides its shape is this division right here, which separates the, sort of the background. This is the table uh, happening through the bottle. And notice the distortion that happens in glass, so don't try to make a straight line here. So that's really the only division I want at this stage. And then when I come to my pair, I just want a dark side and a light side, and I'll, I'll work on the shape and, and fix that later. So start to lay in um, your grays, your tones, uh, put your table in, and again, avoid detail. Uh, just try and keep your shapes and your you know, relative value correct. And one way you can judge that is squint your eyes. If you squint your eyes at this, you'll see that you know, this is kind of accurate in terms of its relationship compared to this. It's very dark and a light background. Uh, but the pear is a little bit too dark. Uh, and that's no problem right now. We'll be tweaking that as we go along. But squinting your eyes is a really, really good technique uh, for being able to see values in your work. Uh, and here it's pushed a little bit further. Okay, we've lightened up the pear, uh, darkened a little bit of the background, uh, starting to put the core shadow in the pear. Again, going back to that presentation on shadows, notice this light piece here. This is the reflected light that's happening. Uh, developing some of the lights at the bottom of the bottle. You see there's this kind of hazy light that's happening here. Then it gets a little bit darker, then it gets a little bit lighter, and then it gets darker again. So those kind of layers are going to be coming in. And also you begin to start seeing some vertical stripes happening on the glass. Um, I don't have them all in yet. I'm just kind of playing with them and indicating them. And you just keep working layer upon layer. You leave these things until the very end. So we're going to leave those out, take it to the next level. Uh, you can see here things are a little bit more refined. I'm looking for that dark line that's in here and you can barely see it right there coming down. It's a little bit lighter here, a little bit darker there, then lighter again. Uh, working on this shape here, noticing that there is this uh, light reflection. It's probably the pear or something in the room. A little bit of a fogginess down here. So look for those things and start to put them in. All right, shaping up the shadows, uh, coming into the pear, refining it uh, just a little bit more. So we're moving along and you just keep doing layer upon layer upon layer and the, the next one is uh, I've skipped a few steps, just gone right to it because you, you know um, what those steps would be, just more information as you develop it. So you're looking for, uh, glass has some interesting properties. It's very reflective, so the things that reflect in it tend to have very clear edges, especially this dark line here. Now I've exaggerated it slightly. It's not as strong in the original photo. And, you know, that's a, a piece of advice for the future. Um, exaggerate. Make things just slightly stronger than you actually see them. It, it brings in a nice sort of effect. Uh, we've got this kind of light piece here. Again, we talked about. Again, mine's a little bit bigger. So don't worry about getting it perfect because we're going to go over this again with color and that's when we want to sort of uh, narrow things down and get them uh, a lot more correct. Okay, so the grisaille stage is just a stage where you start to think in terms of lights and darks. You start to modify and develop 
uh, the shadows that are happening, uh, the light pieces, the dark pieces, the mid pieces, all of these things in your painting. It's a really good practice to help you see light and dark because that's really what color is about uh, for this kind of course. Our color has to be controlled in terms of its lightness and its darkness, and that's what we'll be doing uh, next week. All right, but this gives us a lot of practice, and then you'll find it's, it gets easier to put paint on top of paint.